This is the Stekenjok mine in northern Sweden, owned by the Boleden Company and one of the first in the world to employ all hydraulic drilling. The two mining methods used here, room and pillar, and cut and fill, both lend themselves to mechanization. And Boleden took full advantage of this. For their development drifting and production drilling, they chose three Atlas Copco Boomer Jumbos and a single boom Promec rig. Boleden has closely followed the development of the Atlas Copco hydraulic rock drill COP 1038 and have placed their mines at disposal for testing the prototypes. A successive transition to hydraulic drilling, wherever possible, is now taking place at all of their mines. At Leisval, where this transition has already been completed, the overall hydraulic drilling output rose by 20 to 30 percent in comparison to air-powered rigs. Alpine tunneling for railways, motor highways or hydroelectric schemes is commonly associated with the driving of long tunnels through the rock massif, often on tight time schedules. It was natural then that alpine tunneling contractors were not slow to adopt the new technique of hydraulic rock drilling. In January 1974, Atlas Copco delivered its first hydraulic drilling rig to Switzerland at the immense Furka project. By 1976, 12 alpine tunnel fronts out of 13 were being driven with the help of Atlas Copco hydraulic rock drills. To give a few figures, the Furka project comprises a 15 kilometer long railway tunnel having a cross-sectional area of 25 square meters and a 5 kilometer long transport tunnel of 9 square meters. Atlas Copco equipment supplied for the main tunnel include a five boom and a four boom jumbo and for the transport tunnel a three boom rig. The five boom jumbo used here with Tunmec hydraulic booms is built on a rail bound portal carriage. During drilling the carriage wheels are swung out sideways to make room for the bottom drill control panels. Haulage out is done with Hagland shuttle cars. These can pass freely under and through the portal ring. Loading is carried out with electrically powered Goodman Conway loaders. In the vicinity of the Furka project is Grimsel pumped storage power plant. As with all power stations, this involves considerable initial construction work and preparations at the surface. Working in the access tunnel is an Atlas Copco six boom hydraulic rig of the Promec type. We shall spend a little more time on the next project to study it closer. It's the Freyus Tunnel, which is part of a highway project between Italy and France. It's a curious fact that this new Freyus Tunnel follows a directly parallel route to the Mount Cenis Tunnel, which was completed in 1870 and was the first tunnel in the world to be driven with pneumatic rock drills. Now with hydraulic drilling, two important milestones in the history of tunnel driving technique have been reached at the same place. The six boom Promec rig being used in the new tunnel was assembled in Milan by Atlas Copco Italia. It has a self-advancing portal carriage with six hydraulic booms and two service platforms. Following the normal testing of all functions, the rig was disassembled and transported in sections to Freyus, where it was assembled again when in the tunnel. 
The tunnel has an area of 85 square metres and will be nearly 13 kilometres long when completed. The fact that the behaviour of the alpine rock varies with the geological conditions and depth of the tunnel below surface makes drilling often a troublesome undertaking. Continuous reinforcement is therefore common practice. The rig is so constructed that all roof bolting, setting up of steel frame supports and similar work can be performed from the rig itself, which saves a great deal of time. Haulage is done with trucks which can drive through the open passage allowed by the portal carriage. Quite a few Swedish power project tunnels have considerably larger dimensions. For these, the area is driven in separate sections with a top heading and bench. One of these is the Swedish State Power Board site at Ritsum. Here, a special drilling rig with five COP 1038 hydraulic rock drills covers the complete 11 meter wide bench. Drilling and loading is simultaneous and makes a considerable time saving. There are three of these rigs operating at Ritsum with a total of 15 COP 1038s. The rigs were designed, built and tested at Atlas Copco Simber Works at Naka on the outskirts of Stockholm. The drilling and blasting out of rock caverns for the storage of oil and even gas has been made an economical undertaking thanks to a highly developed Swedish technique. A large Swedish company, SCG, employing this technique was commissioned by one of the major oil companies to construct an underground oil storage at a free port in the Stockholm area. For this sizable project they chose at three boom jumbo, having an unusually long reach. With this, it could cover tunnel areas from 20 to 100 square meters. The jumbo had its own 3000 to 500 volt transformer, which meant that lighter cables could be carried to lend greater flexibility of movement to the rig. Blasting was carried out in three stages. First, a seven meter high top heading, then two benches, each of 10 meters with horizontal drilling. The size of the finished storage cabin is 27 meters in height and 18 meters in width, for which hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of rock were removed. Deep down under the surface, now lies a gigantic rock storage for oil. It's there, but you don't see it. The first underground oil storage drilled with hydraulic rock drills. Another interesting case story, also underground, is from Colorado in the United States. This time, it concerns a retort cavern from which shale oil is extracted by the Occidental Petroleum Corporation. Two access tunnels were pierced through the mountain and the oil bearing shale between drilled and blasted. Pipelines were installed for carrying oil to storage and for gas recovery. The shale is then heated by controlled gas burners at the top and the retort begins to produce oil which is led out to storage and delivery at the bottom. The off gas is recycled for burning and driving the gas turbines of the electric power plant on the surface. 5,000 barrels of oil per day and plant are now produced. The Atlas Copco all hydraulic boomer used gives penetration rates 50 to 100% higher than those obtained with pneumatic drills. Mechanical availability has been above 90% since start in November 1974, making it the first Atlas Copco all hydraulic drill on the North American market. Long tunnels are not exclusive to the Swiss Alps. In many parts of the world, these are needed for conducting fresh water supply. Believe it or not, even in Sweden. As part of a long-range project, 
for guaranteeing fresh water supply to a large region in southern Sweden, an 80 kilometer long tunnel, Sweden's longest, is being driven from Lake Bolman southwards. To make this tunnel, several access tunnels are being driven along its route for mucking out and transport. Engaged on this $100 million project are four Atlas Copco Promec rigs, each having three COP1038 hydraulic rock drills. All drilling personnel involved in this scheme have been trained at specially arranged centres. Here, all aspects of tunnel driving, including highly mechanised loading with a hag loader and shuttle cars, are covered. Yet again, we see proof of the improved working conditions that electrohydraulic machines give. There is a great advantage too in using a mutual source of energy. The same electric cable that feeds the hydraulic drill rig also serves the loaders. This ideal combination of COP1038 for drilling with a hag loader and shuttle cars for loading and haulage is marketed by Atlas Copco. Here, one can genuinely speak of a new, effective system for tunnel driving, which is easy on the operator. It's a long call back to those early, hazardous days of tunneling. At the Bowman project, as at most others, a central on-site service car tends to running repairs to cut downtime. When completed in 1984, the Bowman Tunnel will provide many cities and industrial areas and a greater part of Sweden's best agricultural region with a substantial supply of fresh water. Reports of successful applications of hydraulic rock drilling where Atlas Copco equipment is being used, continue to come in. These will be presented in a subsequent sequel to this film. <laughs>